allows me to learn about my family's history and embrace its strong and rich culture. Today's spotlight, in honor of Hispanic Heritage Month, we remember Cesar Estrada Chavez, a Mexican-American born on March 31, 1947 in Yuma, Arizona. Hardened by his early experience as a manual laborer, Chavez founded the National Farm Workers Association in 1962. Stressing nonviolent methods, Chavez drew attention for his causes via boycotts, marches, and hunger strikes. He devoted himself to helping the poorest workers in America. Chavez encountered wretched migrant camps, corrupt labor contractors, meager wages for backbreaking work, and bitter racism. The movement he inspired succeeded in raising salaries and improving working conditions for farm workers in California, Texas, Arizona, and Florida. Today, we celebrate Cesar Chavez, an American icon of Hispanic heritage. 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, start, two, one, boost ignition, and liftoff of the space shuttle Discovery, returning to the space station, taking the way for future missions beyond. In honor of Hispanic Heritage Month, we celebrate the achievements of Dr. Ellen Lori Ochoa, born in Los Angeles, California on May 10, 1958. Dr. Ochoa, of Mexican-American descent, received her Bachelor of Science in Physics from San Diego State University, and later a Master of Science and Doctorate from Stanford Department of Electrical Engineering. Dr. Ochoa, a veteran astronaut, became the 11th director of the Johnson Space Center in 2012. She is the first Hispanic director and second female director. She became the first Hispanic woman to go to space when she served on a nine-day mission on the Space Shuttle Discovery in 1993. She has flown in space four times, spending almost 1,000 hours in orbit. Today we celebrate Dr. Ellen Ochoa, an American icon of Hispanic heritage. In honor of Hispanic Heritage Month, we remember Master Sergeant Raul Perez Roy Benavides, a Mexican Native American born in Guero, Texas on August 5, 1935, son of a Mexican farmer and Yaqui Native American mother. Benavides shined shoes at the local bus station, labored on farms in California and Washington, and worked at a tire shop. In 1952, Benavides enlisted in the Texas Army National Guard and later, during the Korean War, transferred to active duty service with the U.S. Army and joined Special Forces. While in Vietnam, Sergeant Benavides voluntarily boarded returning aircraft to assist in an extraction attempt of troops engaged in active combat. 
realizing that all team members were either dead or wounded and unable to move to the pickup zone, he directed aircraft to a nearby clearing where he jumped from a hovering helicopter and ran approximately 75 meters under withering small arms fire to the crippled team. Prior to reaching the team's position, he was wounded in his right leg, face, and head. Despite these painful injuries, he took charge, repositioning the team members and directing their fire to facilitate the landing of extraction aircraft and the loading of wounded and dead team members. Sergeant Benavides's gallant actions to join voluntarily his comrades who were in critical straits, to expose himself constantly to enemy fire, and his refusal to be stopped despite numerous severe wounds saved the lives of at least eight men. His fearless personal leadership, tenacious devotion to duty, and extremely valorous actions in the face of overwhelming odds were in keeping with the highest traditions of military service and reflect the utmost credit on him and the United States Army. For his heroism, Master Sergeant Benavides was awarded the Medal of Honor. Today, we celebrate Master Sergeant Roy Benavides, an American icon of Hispanic heritage. Good morning, and bienvenidos to this year's celebration of the Hispanic Heritage Month. I am Eliezer Cardona, your narrator for today's ceremony. Before we start today's ceremony, we would like to take this opportunity to recognize our distinguished and special guests in virtual attendance. From the 412 Test Wing, Colonel Randall Gordon, Vice Commander, and Chief Master Sergeant Ian Aishan, Command Chief. Ladies and gentlemen, please join us for the singing of our national anthem by Mrs. Heather Leopold from the 412 Test Wing Financial Management. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we held at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave thank you mrs leopold Due to the global pandemic, we decided to develop this video presentation as an alternative to our regular in-person activities to happen during this time of year in an effort to expand access to everyone in the Edwards community and minimize risk. We appreciate you for joining us today. As of today, we have lost over 205,000 Americans and over 1 million people worldwide to COVID-19. Please join us in a moment of silence to honor their memory and pay our respects to them and their surviving family and friends.
And now, please welcome Mr. Roy Arellano from the 412 Test Wing Communication Squadron and this year's Hispanic Heritage Month Committee Chair for opening remarks. Bienvenidos. Welcome to the Edwards Air Force Base Hispanic Heritage Month Celebration 2020. My name is Roy Arellano, and on behalf of the Hispanic Heritage Month Committee, thank you for joining us today. When we speak of Hispanic or Latino heritage, we speak of a rich and diverse cultural legacy. From the United States to Mexico, from Panama to Puerto Rico, from Ecuador to Chile, and from Peru to the Yucatan, to include indigenous people and Afro-Latinos of the African diaspora, our heritage reflects a wealth of cultural diversity. The blending of indigenous American, African, and European cultures, along with a common language, led to the development of our own remarkable forms of music, dance, art, cultural and national traditions, and of course, food. Our diversity has been part of the American fabric since the beginning. Nuestro orgullo, our pride, is exemplified in our contributions in military and civil service, the arts, science, technology, literature, politics, and especially the food. Today, we celebrate the remarkable achievements, our heritage, and the beautiful wealth of the Latino culture that has contributed to the greatness of the United States of America and other nations throughout the world. Today, we honor the past, and through our contributions, sacrifices, and diversity, we are securing the future. Thank you again for joining us today. We hope you enjoy our celebration. Muchas gracias. Thank you, Mr. Arellano. The Hispanic Heritage Committee would like to welcome the Aline Folklorico Group from the Studio 8135, Lancaster, California, who have put together this celebration message. Hi, my name is Nicte Rivera Gonzalez. Hello, my name is Nerissa Rivera, and we are part of Aline Folklorico Group. We are so excited to have this opportunity to be able to share with you a little bit about what our Mexican heritage means to us. Our Mexican heritage is indulged with so many beautiful cultures and traditions. And it's really important for us to keep those traditions alive to be able to pass them on to future generations. Um, our Mexican culture means so much to us because it has shaped the young women we are today. We are lucky enough to be able to participate in these Mexican traditions. Having the opportunity to cook and eat traditional Mexican plates like tacos and pozole. Being able to speak, read, and write in both English and Spanish. Participate in traditions like Dia de los Muertos, also known as Day of the Dead, and Dance Folklorico. Being part of this community makes us feel connected to our roots, and it reminds us of who we are and where we come from. Thank you for your service and all you do, all your hard work, time, and dedication to protect and serve our country. I wanted to take the time to say thank you to all of the members of the Air Force for all your guys' hard work. Thank you guys for all your hard work. Bye! Thank you for your service to United States Air Force from Aline. Take this very valuable time to honor our United States Air Forces. I just really wanted to say thank you. Alba Virgen del Mariachi, cuando escucho sus cantares me dan ganas de llorar. El Mariachi suena con alegre son, oye como alegra canta mi canción. Suena el alto viento, ay, 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 ay,
Thank you, Aline Folklorico Group. This year's keynote address will be given by our United States Air Force Test Pilot School, Commandant Colonel Sabrina Poco Pavon. She is responsible for leading the world's premier flight test school as it educates, it trains the next generation of flight test professionals. The test pilot school graduates 48 students annually with a master's of science degree in flight test engineering and executes the largest, most diverse flying operation in Air Force Material Command, leveraging over 4,000 flying hours and a budget of over $40 million. Colonel Pabon earned her commission in 1999 from the Air Force Reserve Officer Training Corps at the University of Notre Dame. She has been a Flight Test Squadron Directorate of Operations and served in the Indo-Pacific Command J-8 Directorate. She is a Joint Qualified Officer and holds a Level 3 Acquisition Program certifications in Systems Planning, Research and Development, Engineering and Test Evaluation. Colonel Pavon is a Senior Officer Air Crew Member with more than 700 military flight hours in 30 aircraft types as a flight test engineer and instructor flight test engineer as well. So without further delay, Colonel Pavon. Hi, I am Colonel Sabrina Pavon. My friends and coworkers call me by my call sign Poco. Yes, for un poco, cause I am super tall. And I am the Commandant of the United States Air Force Test Pilot School. It is an honor to be speaking to you today to share some of the amazing impacts Hispanics have had on our history and the way we are shaping the future. The theme for Hispanic Heritage Month this year is honoring the past, securing the future. Today, we remember and honor the legacy of the greatest generation who contributed to the Allied victory in World War II. It is estimated that approximately 400 to 500,000 Hispanic Americans participated in the war and they played a large role by serving on all fronts, European, Pacific, and the home front. I recently learned that my grandfather served three years in the Army during World War II from May 1942 to November 1945, spending at least two of those years serving overseas. Well, I never got the chance to hear his stories. I would like to take this opportunity to highlight and honor a few events and people that have immensely contributed to our freedom. One person who exemplifies the dedication and support from Hispanics was Francisco Mercado Jr. He had a tough time finding employment as he tried to pursue a career as an electrician after graduating from a trade school in Los Angeles. Unfortunately, this was due to his nationality. He was not selected for an apprenticeship by the electrician's unit. So when the war broke out in 1942, he volunteered as an Air Corps aviation cadet. And now this is where his story is one I think many Hispanics can relate to. He was born actually as David Mercado, and when he went to join the Air Corps as a cadet, uh, and they gave him his birth certificate to give to the recruiters, it turned out his name was Francis Mercado. Apparently, when his father, who spoke very little English, filled out his birth certificate, he put his name instead of his son's in the container. There's definitely stories like that in my family. I don't know about yours. <laughs> After Mercado joined the Air Corps, he successfully completed flight training. And then he went to training in Arizona in January 1943 to attend dual engine advanced pilot training. However, after only four training flights, he fell ill and spent a month at the infirmary. They believe he had valley fever, which is something that we can relate to at test pilot school here in the Mojave Desert. We have had students fall ill with valley fever, and it has caused a severe disruption to them completing the course because it's a serious illness and usually takes a long time to recover from. Luckily, the test pilot school students have all recovered quickly enough to still meet their graduation requirements. Unfortunately, things did not go as well for Mercado. By the time he recovered, he was so far behind that once he was cleared to fly again, he was soon given a check ride and washed out of his class. But it turns out that the washout rate for his class was actually very high as the aircraft were difficult to fly. So he was not the only one to not complete the course. 
The graduates that did make it through went on to fly the B-26 or night fighters. But it all may have been for the best, as his best friend, who went on to fly night fighters, ended up dying on his first solo night flight. Since Mercado did not make it through pilot training, he was still offered the option to serve by becoming a bombardier or navigator. He selected bombardier, and he graduated from bombardier school in September 1943. He went on to complete his combat training and work with a 491st bomb group flying B-24s. His bomb group arrived in England in May of 1944, and he flew his first combat missions in early June, including on D-Day against, early mili against military targets in France. He also flew many combat missions over Germany, targeting large railroad yards. On July 21st of 1944, on one of those missions on their way to bomb a rail yard, his B-24 was severely crippled by flak and lost an engine. The pilot decided to push to the target, even though they could no longer keep up with the rest of their group. The crew made it to and bombed their target, and they almost made it back to their divert field, but not quite. The crew of 10 men were forced to bail out over England. Everyone parachuted to safely except for the pilot who ended up in the channel and drowned because he had positioned the plane to end up over the water to not injure anyone on land. After surviving that attack and, ba and bailout, Mercado and the rest of his crew members continued to serve, and a month later their unit was reassigned to replace the 492nd bomb group as it had been disbanded because it had lost 60 B-24s in a three-month period. In late November of 1944, er, on a mission to destroy an oil refinery in Germany, his Brahm group was attacked by over 100 enemy fighters and lost 16 out of 28. Imagine a group of 28 aircraft flying against 100 enemy fighters coming at you. The fact that 12 even survived is amazing. Luckily, Mercado and his crew were again spared that day. He then went on to participate in the largest bombing raid of the war on December 24, 1944, targeting and bombing highway and railway bridges in Germany. Over the next month, Mercado flew several more combat missions, with his last being January 16th of 1945. Overall, overall, he flew 35 combat missions over enemy territory and was awarded the Distinguished Flying Cross. The second member of the greatest generation to share with you today is Brigadier General Mihil Guillermini Pacheco. He is a Puerto Rican who served in the Royal Canadian Air Force, the Royal Air Force, the U.S. Army Air Forces, and the U.S. Air Force from 1941 to 1975. After he graduated from high school in Puerto Rico, he moved to San Diego, where he pursued his private pilot's license and then enlisted in the Royal Canadian Air Force as a pilot in 1941. However, when World War II broke out, he offered his services and joined the Royal Air Force. He flew in a squadron of P-39s with the Royal Air Force from England to North Africa as part of the Allied invasion of Iran. He left the Royal Air Force in the fall of 1942 to join the U.S. Army Air Forces, where he continued to fly the P-39 for a year before transferring to a squadron flying the P-47 Thunderbolt to replace pilot losses over in North Africa and Italy. Over the course of the war, he flew over 200 missions in combat over North Africa, Italy, Corsica, and England. During one mission, in 1943, his P-39 went down over Algiers, but he was able to return to combat. On a later mission, he led an attack against a Nazi position in Italy, and his P-47 was hit by enemy aircraft fire, which caused it to catch fire. He made a steep nosedive and was able to put out the flames that were consuming the aircraft, and he rejoined the mission. That day, his squadron successfully destroyed vehicles and a strategic railroad used to transport enemy military equipment. For these events and several others, he was awarded the Silver Star and five Distinguished Flying Crosses for exhibiting heroism and extraordinary achievement during his combat missions. After the war, he continued to serve and was assigned to the newly created Air Force. He was assigned as base commander of the 198th Tac Tactical Fighter Squadron in Puerto Rico and was instrumental in the creation of the Puerto Rico Air National Guard. He retired after 34 years of combined service as a Brigadier General in the U.S. Air Force. Now, while females did not participate in aerial combat in World War II, the greatest generation did include many Hispanic women who served in the Women's Army Auxiliary Corps, which was established during the war to help women use their skills and knowledge to support the national defense of the nation. In particular, the Women's Corps was focused on recruiting biling bilingual Hispanic women that could assist with cryptology, communication, and interpretation. Carmen Contreras Bozak joined the Women's Army Auxiliary Corps in 42. She was the first of almost 200 Puerto Rican women who would go on to serve in the Corps. She spoke five languages and volunteered to be part of the 149th 
Women's Army Auxiliary Corps Post Headquarters Company, which was the first unit to go overseas in January 1943. She arrived in Africa and was assigned duties in General Eisenhower's Theater Headquarters in Algiers. She was specifically assigned to the Signal Corps to perform teletype operator duties and was responsible for the transmission of encoded messages between Dwight Eisenhower's Theater Headquarters and the battlefield in Tunisia. Now at the theater headquarters, air raids were a common occurrence. And an important thing to note is that it was very dangerous for women who served overseas during World War II because they were auxiliary and not designated members of the US Army. Therefore, they had no protection under the Geneva Convention if they became captured, wounded, or ill. They also were not treated equal to the military men and that they did not receive any overseas pay or life insurance. The women also often faced gender and racial discrimination within their respective units. Other women of the Corps overseas worked as nurses, mechanics, and telegram operators. And although they were important to the success of the Allied forces, they did not receive recognition for their contribution back home. As Hispanic women returned home to the United States, they were often not welcome as heroes, but instead they were discriminated against and seen as second-class citizens. These women made huge contributions to World War II and it is a shame that it was overlooked at the time. But the good news is that after the war, many more women did enter the workforce in the US and the societal and cultural norms of the women out working outside the home began to shift. They were no longer expected to just be homemakers. These women paved the way for me to be standing here in front of you today. After returning home, Carmen even continued to serve working various civilian jobs, through, uh, ending up a uh, primarily as a volunteer at the Veterans Affairs Hospital. Now, those are just a few examples of the many Hispanics that are part of the greatest generation. As we look at the more recent past and towards the future, I discovered that I am the second Hispanic commandant of the world's premier test pilot school, with Colonel Noel Zamat being the first from 2010 to 2012. Working to secure the future, Colonel Zamat and his team crafted the Air Force's initial framework for testing military systems in contested cyberspace and developed the first formal curriculum to train remotely piloted aircraft test pilots. After retiring from the Air Force and serving in the private sector for several years, Colonel Zamat took on a very challenging role as the revitalization coordinator for the Federal Oversight and Management Board for Puerto Rico. In this role, he worked to fast track the economic recovery of the island by creating jobs and setting the conditions for economic growth, which became even more important after Hurricane Maria. It is never surprising to hear that someone with such a great career continued to serve the public and work to take care of the people even after his military service was complete. At Test Pilot School today, we are developing future test professionals and leaders who will ensure the success of our war-winning capabilities. We are privileged to have a diverse workforce with student staff and support professionals from all over the world working together as part of our team every day. This diverse team works brilliantly together to produce highly adaptive, critical thinking flight test professionals to lead and conduct full spectrum tests and evaluation of weapon systems. We are partnering with Space Force and expanding our capabilities through the development of a three month space test fundamentals course so that members of the Space Force can test their systems to make sure they function as designed. As we continue to be the world's premier institution for flight test education, training and research, we will lead and evolve as necessary to meet the warfighters needs. Thank you for your time today. I hope you enjoyed learning about a few of our Hispanic heroes. It was an honor to share their stories with you as we honor the past and secure the future. May you all have a wonderful day. Thank you. Colonel Pavon, from all of us here today, thank you for sharing your knowledge and personal experience. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the 412 Test Wing and the 2020 Hispanic Heritage Month Committee, thank you for celebrating with us today. And this concludes our ceremony. Have a great afternoon. Por Don Abor.